This is a smart box, and I've got it hooked up to my computer, which is currently running the Acorn Archimedes emulator Arculator, into which I have hacked some very crude serial port emulation. Now, the smart box is designed to be used as part of a computer control system. You've got eight digital inputs here, eight digital outputs here, uh, four motor drivers around this side, and four analog inputs tucked away on the left side here. And uh, the idea is that you can then write a program that can take inputs from these digital sensors and then drive various outputs based on the logic in a program that you design. Uh, now, the program here that I'm running uh, is in Logicator, which is a flowchart based uh, programming environment. Um, it cycles the lights in one direction, then it cycles them back down in the other direction, which is uh, not the most exciting of programs, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, when you've just got a sort of a row of LEDs like this, that's pretty much the equivalent of Hello World if I can't uh, output text to it. Um, but to give you a little more uh, information about how this box can be used, I'm going to switch to the Smart Move programming environment, which uses a basic type programming language instead of a flowchart, uh, just because I think it's a bit easier to demonstrate what the box can do. This is Smart Move, and in the top left hand corner, we've got the monitor that shows us the current status of the sensors and the outputs. So, for example, here I've got this joystick. If I move it down, sensor zero light comes on, move it up, sensor one light comes on. Uh, I've also got connected to the sensor C socket this temperature sensor that uses an LM35. I don't have uh, the temperature probe that was available for this box, so I kind of made my own, but it's reporting a temperature of 20, 21 degrees, so that seems to be working quite nicely. It's a fairly standard room temperature in here. Uh, on the outputs here, I've got a lamp connected to output 7, which I can switch on by clicking there. Alternatively, I can control it by typing commands here, so I can switch off lamp number 7 or I could perhaps make it flash by doing switch on 7 and make it pulse uh, on for 50 centiseconds, off for 50 centiseconds. That now flashes away, and then I can switch off all to switch it back off again. Uh, I've also got this little motor connected to the motor A port. Uh, if I type in here uh, forward A, that's now moving forwards. If I type in back Word A, it's going to jump and move backwards, uh, or I can halt A, like that. However, of course, it's most useful to be able to sort of control this with a more sophisticated procedure, and here I've got one called Drive, if I now uh, bring that up in the editor. There we go, you can see how that's working. It's an infinite loop, a repeat forever loop. It says if sensor 1, which is the up direction sensor, then forward A, else if sensor 0, that's the backward sensor, then backward A, otherwise halt A, so stop the motor. And if I now close that and run it, it doesn't seem to be doing anything, but if I now move the joystick up, the motor moves in one direction, move it down, the motor moves in the other direction. So not the most sophisticated of programs, but hopefully it works as a demonstration. Um, I'll put together something a bit more interesting uh, to show a bit more sophisticated control that's possible with this box. To continue this demonstration, I'm going to have to introduce this analog sensor that I've put together. Uh, it acts like the user adapter that just allows you to feed an analog voltage straight into the smart box to measure. And connected to that, I've got this IR reflection sensor. So if I put this down on the desk, you'll see that as I move my hand down towards it, the reading from the adapter increases until I'm very close, and it maxes out. If I then move my hand away, it goes back down again, so you can tell that there's something uh, in front of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this motor uh, above it, because the motor shaft has got a flat surface that will reflect the light very well back to the sensor, uh, and the rest of the shaft is rounded, so that's not going to reflect the light so well. So I'm just going to mount that now. Here is the incredibly sophisticated lash-up. Uh, I've now taped the motor directly above the sensor with the flat side facing down, and it's going to be reflecting the maximum amount of light back into the adapter. You can see that by the fact that the reading is 255. Um, I've put together a little procedure called step that allows us to step the motor through a complete number of turns. So for example, if I type step one, it'll rotate once. If I do step two, it'll rotate twice. If I do step minus three, it'll step backwards three times. So to see how that works, let's bring up the step procedure. If I do step and edit, that'll open it up in the editor window. And you see that this procedure takes one parameter, which is called num. We then make sure that that number is an integer. If the number is zero, 
then end, we're not going to spin the motor at all. Otherwise, if the number is greater than zero, then switch the motor forwards. Otherwise, if it's negative, switch the motor backwards. So that will now start the motor spinning. Here we just do a check if we've passed a negative number, then invert it by doing uh, zero minus the number, so that if we, put, for example, passed in minus five, that'll now be five. And that's used because here we've now got a for loop, or a for next loop. What this will do is it will go around this loop between the for and the next uh, for the number of times specified by num. And the first thing we do in that loop is we wait until the adapter reading is below 150. So as the motor spins, it's going to change uh, from reflecting all of the light back with its flat surface to the curved surface. And when it's the curved surface, it will not reflect as much light back, will it get a lower reading. And we check for that uh, by waiting until the uh, value returned by the adapter is less than 150. Then we will move here uh, and we will wait until the adapter reading is back over 250 again. You can see here, uh, that the adapter reading value is pegged at 255 when it's at the flat side, so we will detect that with this. And then, say, we hit the next, so we go back round uh, until num is exhausted, and then we will halt A, we will stop the motor. So that's how that procedure works. And uh, say, run it again, step minus three. Goes round three times. We've also got a procedure here called main, which is much simpler. That just checks the uh, status of the 0 and 1 sensors, which are connected to this joystick. So here we've got a repeat forever, sort of a main loop. And here, if the sensor 0 uh, is true, then step 1, so uh, step forwards one step. Otherwise, if sensor 1 is true, then step backwards a step. So if I close that and now run the main procedure, you can see that as I move this joystick uh, up or down, I can control the motor. So this is a really simple um, demonstration of what can be done with a smart box, uh, but hopefully it gives you an idea of some of the capabilities of it. One of the things I find particularly interesting is that uh, this is called a smart box, and you might have thought that all of the um, sophisticated software control is happening within SmartMove here. In fact, it's not. This smart box actually has a 65CO2 uh, processor in it, and it's running the basic interpreter that makes all of this happen. Uh, and I can demonstrate that by the fact that if I now uh, leave this pr uh, program running and hit the disconnect button there, Smart Move now exits. However, our program still runs. And that's because it is running in the smart box. All Smart Move is doing is providing that user interface to allow you to type commands, send them to the box, and um, load them into here. In fact, I can just disconnect the serial port connection here, and you'll see that it still works. Um, but yeah, anyway, hopefully that's uh, an interesting quick look at the smart box, and thanks for watching.